Angiosperm is the scientific term for a flowering plant. This means that it produces flowers of some sort which yield seeds. They come in all shapes and sizes, but they're all still angiosperms. This is different from gymnosperms, which also produce seeds, but they don't produce flowers and fruits to enclose those seeds. That's why the term gymnosperm means naked seeds. Examples of this would be conifers like pine trees or my beloved coastal redwood. In the plant world, the gymnosperms evolved first, creating a landscape populated with conifers, cycads, and other non-flowering plants. The evolution of angiosperms, however, was famously referred to by Darwin as an abominable mystery. So what makes an angiosperm? First, the ovule, the space where an egg is fertilized and grows into a seed, is enclosed and hollow. They also undergo a process called double fertilization. Basically, every pollen grain contains two sperm cells. When they reach a stigma, the female anatomy of the plant, one sperm cell combines with an egg cell to form a zygote, which will become a seed. The other extra sperm cell combines with a second cell in the ovule, which has a very different purpose. It grows into something called the endosperm, which provides nutrients to that growth growing seed. The endosperm is basically the energy storage that allows germination to happen. And these are only a few of the traits of angiosperms, but outlining all of them would require a whole other video. So now let's talk about how angiosperms evolved. Despite the common characteristics I mentioned, angiosperms are amazingly diverse. They grow all over the world, on land and in the water. Some even grow on other plants. They're referred to as epiphytes. Air plants, which I've talked about in previous videos, are epiphytes. So there are literally hundreds of thousands of angiosperm species around the world. But where did flowering plants get their start? To figure that out, we turn to fossils. The first evidence we have of angiosperms in the fossil record is from 115 to 125 million years ago. It is in the genus Archaefructus, and based on its morphology, scientists believe it was an aquatic plant. This ties into another of the mysteries regarding angiosperm evolution. There is no consensus on whether angiosperms evolved first aquatically or terrestrially, aka in the water or on land. The earliest fossils we have, like the Archaefructus I just mentioned, were aquatic plants. However, just because that's the earliest fossil we have, that doesn't mean there aren't any more older angiosperm fossils out there that lived on land first. The fossil record is a great resource, but gives us an incomplete picture of the evolution of angiosperms. Regardless, we know that aquatic plants are very, very old, especially the order Nymphales, which contains water lilies, and a terrestrial group of plants that is very important in angiosperm evolution is the genus Amborella. These are shrubby plants and trees native to New Caledonia, a collection of islands west of Australia. They have evergreen leaves and flowers that grow from the axils of the leaves. And its vascular system shows some ancient characteristics. Unlike many plants which have vessels in their xylem, the channel that moves water from the plant's roots to its leaves, this plant has trachids, long cells adapted to moving water. This genus is thought to have branched off early, followed by Nymphales, according to a paper from 2007. However, taxonomy and evolution are constantly being reevaluated and shuffled around as we get new data from fossils, genetics, and other sources. Still, we know that there were many basal branches, resulting in the diverse and widespread angiosperms we know today. What is also unique about the spread and diversification of angiosperms is how quickly it happened. The group of angiosperms known as Mesangiospermae split into its five major clades inside of about five million years, a tiny span in evolutionary terms. And that split yielded 97% of the angiosperms that exist today. Now, I only touched on a couple of the many plants that are significant to our understanding of the evolution of flowering plants. If you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to check out the sources in the description, especially a paper by Soltis from 2007. The big takeaway here is that flowers are very, very old and very, very diverse. I hope you enjoyed this quick primer on the evolution of angiosperms. There's definitely a lot more to discuss here, so I encourage you to chat about it in the comments, throw any questions you have at me. Also, if there is an ancient plant that you really love, please tell me about it, or if there is a modern day plant that has really ancient roots, definitely tell me about that too. As always, if you'd like to support Brilliant Botany and help me make more videos like these, you can head over to Patreon and become a monthly supporter, or you can check out the link to merch, buy something there. I've got stickers, hats, t-shirts, all sorts of awesome stuff. Thank you so much to my existing Patreon supporters and folks that have bought merch in the past couple months. I'll see you next week with a new tutorial. See you next time.